I'd like to call this meeting to order and uh, ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, <clears throat> any subtractions from the consent agenda? No, sir. Motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, first up we have a presentation from Anoka County. Nick? Currently, there's no shoulders, we're all aware. Um, what this project is going to do is going to add an eight foot shoulder uh, to the entire length, replace all the driveway culverts, uh, fix the ends of the culverts, fix any ditching issues to make sure that they're recoverable so if a car were to go off. Um, standardize the city uh, streets of approaches as much as we can. So, in our, we were able to receive federal funding for this project, which covers 90% of the project. Um, with that being said, we left ourselves a little bit of latitude in there in case we needed to make some changes as we go along. So our intention is to add right turn lanes, add left turn lanes if possible, bypass lanes, and an eight-foot shoulder on the entire project. Mm -hmm. And then with the shoulder, we will do a thin overlay to, to blend it all in. So it's good, even though the pavement's in good condition to get that to get that final wear course on when we put the shoulders on, we're going to come back with a thin overlay. Really, the reason we want to come to you tonight is we want to start reaching out to the property owners and letting them know about the project, have an open house, and we'd like you folks to know about this first, and that way you're, you at least you have some background information that you can see calls or inquiries. So, um, so the, the limits the limits go on this project from Potomac to Taylor River. We anticipate the budget is going to be about 1.1 million total. Of 990,000 will be federal funds, and will be local. I know the county funds, and we don't anticipate any cost share at this point from the city. It's a very good funding mechanism. It would have been nice to do the shoulders when we did the overlay. Uh, just we compete for these projects, and we were fortunate to receive the funding now. At this point. So much of the right of way out there is prescriptive, and I, I don't know your knowledge on prescriptive. Pretty much means what's out there now is what you can use it for. If you have a lane, it has to be a lane. If you have Call a it as traveled, but yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go out. We're going to buy the uh, underlying easements. Uh, a lot of the right away, a lot of property owners it goes right to the center of the road. So we'll correct that and so we have about 43 homeowners that we'll be working with, and I anticipate that we'll have success. Okay. Good. Bill, you have a question. I know you do. Well, I already talked to him about the turn lane up Potomac. Okay. Well, in Kettle River, is there going to be a bypass lane there? Well, what we're showing right now, currently at um, Potomac and Broadway, there is currently a right turn lane, and then we would be at an eight foot shoulder. I'm going to take his comment back and take a look at what we have to do. We have to widen it to a standard intersection, which means you have to build a left turn lane, left turn lane, which is going to push those right wing limits out closer to the home. That's what I would like to see personally. We have to evaluate what we can do there because I do think people probably drive that right turn lane like a bypass lane. They are, and yeah. they're ticketing for that right now. So So really what we want to do next, we'll go back, look at what that impact is going to be. We'll bring the we'll bring the the layout that we have now is what we got our funding based on. We'll bring that to the open house because we want to show what we started with. And then through that public involvement process, we'll get we'll gather that information and, and bring those forward and then the design team will get that for you. So I, I question, you know, the if you're taking a right and going north on Potomac from uh, east on west on Broadway, okay. you would it's a free right turn. I mean you wouldn't you'd slow down a little bit and turn. If you're going to go south, that's where you have to stop and wait for oncoming traffic. So we'd be better off with a center lane versus a right turn lane. You Correct. follow my logic there? In that case, you'd, you'd probably want to build the full, so you'd have opposing. So you could actually make a left. 
people could make a right. Yeah, I mean, that would be ideal, but. Yeah. Yeah. So if you put a bypass on the other side, then they're going to go, you don't know if they're going to be turning on the phone or they're going to go through. So we'll have to run those. What we'll do is we'll get all the traffic count numbers and okay. videos as well to right. see where the movements are. But I, this is very common. We, we hear this a lot, and it's something and I know we try to fix. Jeff is concerned about Notre Dame. Notre Dame. I, I talked to him yeah. also before that. You guys are supposed to wait for the meeting. Well, dang it. Well, he wanted to show us his big map. Right and we are going to be live with our website tomorrow. Oh, okay. We're trying to put the information on, but we didn't want this up and then you folks to get a bunch of phone calls and not know what, what we did here. Okay. So tomorrow, uh, if you go to Monroe County, this is Google Monroe County Highway Department. Mm -hmm. Future projects, this, this should be uploaded tomorrow sometime during the day. Uh, we'll put this general layout on there of what we've come up with, and obviously that's subject to change. I like to come in, you know, you always wait, you come in and it looks like it's done and people people don't like that and you don't want to, so you want to have enough information so people can comment on it because we like to have that involvement process. So, so eventually there's going to be a meeting? Uh, uh, a public meeting, yeah. Public meeting, right. all for those people that are involved. Yeah, public. we would do, a, what we would do in this case is So that way the, the drivers that use it that may not have gotten a postcard will also get that. We'll work with uh, your city administrator to post the information and get it out as best we can. So it'll be, I'm guessing, early spring sometime. We want to have uh, a little bit more, a little bit more detail on some of the work that might be needed. We can actually talk one on one with those property owners as well. So we'll do a lot of kitchen things. So that'll that'll go right up to the roundabout then. Um, have the kitchen meetings before or after the open house? We'll offer it to them either way. A lot of times if it's nice to get the one-on-ones for people that uh, are directly affected. Um, as soon as it's live, we're, we're willing, our staff, myself, my running staff, and my engineer staff, are willing to go out and do So if you get phone calls, feel free to direct them towards us. We'll answer all the questions for you and keep in the loop on what we discuss. So, so what about potential wetland issues and don't don't take that the wrong way because you can fill them all as far as I'm concerned but nope. there's there's wetlands that are along there how to how is it, and I mean so they're gonna you guys are gonna end up pushing the ditches back right because the road will get wider the ditches will go back and then there's a couple places along Broadway where there's some wetland issues I know of yep, so one of the nice things about a project like this is it's a safety issue there's a difference when you go from Safety of capacity, one two lane to four lane versus adding shoulders, right turn lanes, left turn lanes. Those are typically the wetland, the whack of banks, the wetland. They'll actually credit those. So any of the impacts we have will be mitigated through that state bank. So this is one of those type of projects. Typically things that aren't there would be like trails, stuff like that. But what we're going to do is go out in the spring. We will we'll hire a wetland consultant to go out. Do the make, or do the uh, determination of where the wetlands are, and then we'll do our best to avoid all those, and then mitigate what we can avoid. Yeah, you some of them you're not going to get around. Okay. So. I mean, we're fully anticipating that, so or through the watersheds and all those permits and all. Construction year will be 2019. Um, Early or late? Kind of depends on when the bid comes. What we can do, we'll look at the kind of look at the environment. If there's going to be tree clearing, we like to get out a little early, so the, the window to clear the trees has gotten very small. Well, and other threatened and endangered species we have to work through, so I would anticipate we'd want to do an earlier project. Um, so is that shoulder going to accommodate then bike traffic and things like that, or? It'll be an eight-foot shoulder, so it should it should accommodate accommodate bikes. Okay. Guys, any other questions, Mark? Well, the sad thing is, it's going to be about the same time that everything else is going on, and what a train wreck! <laughs> so this is under a safety grant from the feds. Yep, this is under the uh, HSIP program, Highway Improvement Safety Program. It's called. It's, I believe it was the same funds we used for um, that type of project. So a lot of these are uh, proactive for getting out ahead before the crashes. cases where it's too close to a home or there's some other issue we might have to shorten it up or minimize it or, or so, an 
eye towards the residents. Are those safety improvement grants available to our for us for our city roads? I believe they are. I don't know if Dennis would, would know that. Certainly not for local roads or more county. Uh, the state's a state, state aid. If yeah, they're not a state aid city, then they would not necessarily. Okay. Nope. We do have someone in our planning department that could have you. Yeah. Even even the, the wetland credits would be nice to at least to get some of that banking. So maybe we should turn Hornsby over to the county and then they can get their wetland credits and get the there white. There you go. Or not Hornsby, uh, just Our Lake Drive. Look like a quick claim deed. Here you go. <laughs> All right. Any, Danny, any? Dennis, any questions on it? Okay. Pretty straightforward, probably. So we'll do, uh, we'll do a good job with the public outreach for you and we'll. Sure we get a project, so. Okay, thanks for coming tonight. Okay. All right. Do you have a card I can uh, check on Kettle River with you? I have your, I think it's his information. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, thanks for coming. All right, next up we have the uh, Planning Commission report. We have the, we have the top dog from the Planning Commission here tonight. <laughs> Father Chair. <laughs> <laughs> so last week's meeting we had a third meeting with three-way district business owners or representatives of businesses. We had two people coming to the meeting, one from West Point, one from the Racetrack. They gave us some input on what they would like to see or not see. And? <laughs> so the Westmore guy Sometimes I think he was trying to say that we'd like to see more similar things that we can say there that would hinder a potential expansion in the future. Oh, sure. A little less community retail. Housing wise, they weren't real keen on uh, affordable housing or apartment type housing. Most of their employees are looking for single family homes. So, so it looked like, and I missed that one meeting because of circumstances, but it looked like um, Gander Mountain down or from whatever it looked like most of those people wanted to see the uh, commercial industrial yeah. zoning down there. Yeah, I think that was a summary of the next part of the report, which was the, the, the jumping the gun on you? <coughs> no, you go ahead. That was one of the things I saw, so I was just asking. Yeah, that's <clears throat> the same results from the uh, meetings we had with the landowners. What about the northwest corner? Where did most of those people come in? There wasn't many on that one. Yeah, that was our That yeah, was my group. We only had a two people at the table. And they weren't even actually from the Northwest, they were? No, but it was that area. Yeah. yeah. And they didn't want to see any, they really didn't want to see any change. Um, they just want to keep their property until someone comes along and buys it. They don't want any housing in there. They don't they just want commercial. They don't want, the, so the Northwest corner doesn't want any housing? You mean? Mm -hmm. they, they, well, that was their opinion. There's, they said there are two people, a husband and a wife. Across, even across Broadway, like where the? No one showed up for that side. They were. They were the ones by the cell tone or cell tower. Okay. She wants to. Have, she wants. She's interested in coffee shop. Yeah, coffee shop. Yeah. <laughs> and living there too, so residential and. Business. Sure. Well. Okay. And then we had, you know, Aaron from the track. To summarize, I think he was saying that he'd like to see more entertainment-based businesses around the track. Um, Housing-wise. They were looking at uh, you know, affordable housing for their workers and then you know, jobs that people, create jobs that people would have disposable income to spend on the track on entertainment. So that's pretty much summarizes that. Okay. And then from there we went into the, <coughs> had a brief recap on our meetings, our other two meetings, meetings one and two. One being the uh, results of our table meetings with the community plan owners and then the other one being the results of the uh, 
diversify rural versus rural residential designation. That leads us into the uh, two and a half, five acre debacle, yeah. correct? Right. Okay. So um, I think this, I, I know um, we could, uh, Dean hopefully will be here at eight. Yeah. So we could probably reserve that topic till then. Yeah. Probably save some duplication. Because there's definitely some confusion. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, I mean, when I, from what I understood when we, when we started talking about this, we were just going to, we were seeking a designation. Mm -hmm. We weren't talking about any specific areas or if we were going to do it or not do it. The way, the way I understood it, we could seek a designation and we'd have the ability mm -hmm. to do it on our own. But we wouldn't have to do it. We could remain five acres and it just seemed like a win-win <coughs> situation. Seem like a proactive, responsible thing to do. Instead of waiting till the last minute and finding out that hey, we should have probably put some two and a half acre developments in here somewhere. Well, yeah, we'll we'll discuss that <clears throat> once Dean gets here, so we don't repeat ourselves. But was there anything else? Um, that's about it. Okay, so when Dean gets here, I'll call you back up. What's your next statement? If you wouldn't mind. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right, moving on. Um, public open forum. Anyone here for public open forum? I have a question. Run up to the thing and give us your name and address. Pardon? I'm Janet. <coughs> Excuse me, Janet Hagland, one four zero two five Juilliard Street. Um, I know later in the agenda you're going to make an appointment to the EDA. I have a question about um, the EDA. Is that meeting open to the public? And it's always the second Wednesday at 6 o'clock here in this room? Or what, that's what I said on your Yes, list. it's open to the public. Um, it is four times a year. Okay. Which particular? Quar quarterly. Yeah, but which particular weekend or which particular Wednesday? It's, oh, it Wednesday. slides around sometimes, doesn't it? Is second it always the second Wednesday? Of what? Of the month, four uh, times a year. So it would be January plus three months. April. It's, um, so in December of each year, um, there's a publication of all the meetings for the Planning Commission. And on there is the EDA meetings, and it was quarterly. So I think it was January, April, July, and November, I think it was this year. April 11th, July, June 11th, I think, and November 7th. Were you interested in getting on it? No. Hmm. It looks like you already have something that you need. Hmm. No, we need we need more. Yeah. Well, we have What's two the spots. Process for for nominating. Or so the process is you uh, get an application, and then um, the mayor interviews you, and then from that point, I make a recommendation, and then the council adopts you or mod ratifies you. You appoint, and they ratify. There you go. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, anyone else? Okay, moving on. We have uh, information on the Rice Creek Watershed Plan update. What do you got there? There's a letter here just informing you that they are doing a plan update and they're required to notify the local authorities of their plan update. So this is just for, uh, for information purposes. Is it only, it came, only one notice came? <laughs> Okay. I'm not so. sure who's on Rice Creek, but um, it's a 10-year it's plan. It's kind of like our comp plan. They do a water-based plan every 10 years. More busy work. Okay, Dennis. Yeah, I had um, back on the agenda, you already approved this, this the County Ditch 15 study that we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. Based on the modifications for Rice Creek's benefit, they prefer changing such things as words from comprehensive to regional for their own nomenclature. And then we moved. Um, the, the bottom line numbers stayed the same for the estimated fee, but we moved some costs from phase three up to phase two because um, the next item, which is an intergovernmental agreement, um, they're gonna be proposing to fund 50% of the first two phases. So we had a conversation, they agreed to move some of the costs up so that they would fund 50% of those. So I'm just asking you to approve the 
the council memo and fee structure again. None of the bottom numbers have changed. Just again, some minor edits for Rice Creek's benefit. Okay. Someone want to make a motion to that effect? <laughs> so moved. Second. Any other discussion? Are we going to finance our twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand? Um, Elizabeth, do you know how we're going to be? Um, we were going to use uh, part of the money from the rent that we got from Schaefer. Okay. And then ultimately that'll be built into the cost of the infrastructure. Right. Um, okay. Go ahead. That leads to the next item. Well, let's, we got to vote on this one first. So. Oh, sorry. Um, all right. Any other questions? The rent was fifty thousand or something. Seventy-five. Seventy-five. Yeah. So we looked at this and we think this is needed down in the southeast corner. And it's going to be needed all, all along needed. there. And this is going to consolidate what everybody was looking for. It's for going to allow start. people to maximize the usage of their highland instead of creating their own, digging up their own highland to make ponds. It'll allow them to have the pond down south where land's not as valuable. That's the theory. Is That's it? the theory. That's the theory. All right. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Ayes have it. So the next item is related to that, and tonight I'd say it's just a draft. You're not looking for a motion. It's an intergovernmental um, agreement from Rice Creek where they are saying they'll, they're participating in the study, and they'll fund up to 50% of those <coughs> first two phases or up to about 19,000 <coughs> of okay. that study. So I'd say it's um, information for now. Um, that they'll be bring, bringing it back to the next meeting because they'll be signing it at their next meeting in March. So we don't need to make a motion to approve it yet? Correct. Okay. Well, that's not correct on the agenda, but that's fine. Anything else? Um, the last item was um, looking for a motion, or I'm recommending that for information supplied from uh, Priners Preserve, um, they're looking for a third letter of credit reduction. Okay. And so I'm recommending that um, agreeing with a $75,500 reduction. Make um, a motion to uh, approve the Letter, letter of credit reduction request. Second. Okay, any other discussions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's it. Ayes have it. Mary, I have one other issue on the Priner Preserve. Um, I did get a call from Byron Westland and... It's not about snow plowing, is it? It was not snow plowing. Okay. Several weeks ago, we approved uh, preliminary plat two and we took three lots and, and then reduced, and three lots into two lots is what the plat did. It replatted three lots into two. And his question to the city is whether or not he should get a refund of the Parkland dedication because the first plat, he paid X number of lots and now there's not that number of lots in the subdivision. How many did he pay for? I want to pay, I say he paid for 26 lots. And how many is he going to end up with? 25 lots. Well, he or, should get, or maybe it's 27 lots. Whatever it is, it's one less lot. Well, he should get one credit then, don't, a, you, don't you think? Result of mm -hmm. two. Should he? I don't know. Why not? I mean. Well, it was their decision to divide it into two separate lots that we, we okayed that. So now we're going to refund more money. <clears throat> it's $500, right? $762.50. Is it based, based on, like Dennis asked me, based on lots or area? Based lots. On number of lots. Number, number of lots. lots. I've never heard of the, of the practice when you replot, you get refunds, so I'm unfamiliar with this. This is why I'm asking. It's a policy issue. We signed a developer's agreement for $25,250 was the number. That's what they paid. And, and now plat two was approved. Um, there was not a developer's agreement for plat two. Mr. Mayor, um, you would not be legally required to refund it because there's no provision in the code or the development agreement that says you will, but there certainly is a basis uh, with the reduction of one lot um, to make that refund. If you yeah, I, I, I don't, I think if they're only getting one less lot, I, I, don't, I don't know why we would charge them for the lot they didn't get. I know. They, it was on their behalf they changed it, but what if they went down to none? Would they get it all back? So, I mean, what do you guys think? It's only 700 and something bucks, give it back to them. Any? I have no, no, don't no care. Either way. Yeah, Bill. I think we should give it back. Yeah, someone make a motion one way or the other. 
I'll make a motion to refund uh, the difference for the three lots to two lots. Second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Griffith. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, in your additions on page A14 is a letter from the Department of Natural Resources indicating that they will be filing um, an appeal of the uh, variances on Howard Lake development <laughs> for the sanctuary at Howard Lake PUD. Um, they set forth their the, the same things that they put in writing and uh, uh, I, I, did they testify during the hearing? They, they also testified during the hearing. I wasn't there, but so um, the record contains uh, similar objections. Um, and they do note um, in the last paragraph that they're interested in working with the city to bring the development into conformance with state law to protect Howard Lake and other natural resources. Right. Of course, uh, the testimony that was provided at the hearing and, and by our um, experts is that the development would not have an impact on Howard Lake because of the large intermediate wetlands that intervene between. Right. Um, also, we provided in the packets uh, the city's city attorney's position that the um, DNR does not have a consent on, on these matters. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how they'll make out this complaint, but uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, this is something, as I informed um, Elizabeth, that would be hand handled by the League of Minnesota Cities nice. Insurance Trust, which okay. provides uh, defense for the city and, it, and its zoning actions. Does anybody here want to back down? No. No. Nope. Okay, no. so it sounds like we're heading on the right path. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just uh, information unless you wanted to change your position and it sounds like you do Sounds like we're good. So, okay. Keep it going. Thanks. All right. Anything else? The next item is the uh, bituminous roadways development agreement. Okay. Um, there's a copy of that in your packet. Um, I think the most significant thing, I want, this is pretty standard fare, but the most significant things I want to point out are that the uh, document contains, um, an updated copy of the document contains both resolutions of approval, which have uh, a number of findings of fact, as well as a number of conditions, both for the conditional use permit and the preliminary plat. Those are now incorporated into the agreement. There's some exhibits we're working on, including a detailed outline of the cost of utilities. Okay. Um, the most significant discussion item is, um, if you look on page two of the agreement, your city staff is recommending that the utilities, uh, the, the developer connect to uh, city water and sewer within 12 months of the city's approval of this document. Okay. Um, the city engineer can describe kind of what the process would be to um, do a feasibility study and make sure that those improvements are there so they can connect to them. Uh, but essentially, uh, that's our recommendation for any number of reasons. Um, we can discuss the rationale for that, but uh, Mr. Peterson's here. He's, uh, I, I would say he's generally, generally agreeable with the concept. I know he wants to see what the numbers look like. So um, we would continue to refine the numbers and incorporate that. If you approve this agreement, the final form will include all of the connection charges, all of the uh, proposed assessments. But generally, as a concept, he and his council indicated acceptance with that. And that would be perfect, because that'll provide the water, fire protection, everything. Water, fire protection. There had been, I think, some failing septic systems on that site. It would address sure. uh, those systems would be removed as part of the development. The, uh, the development would hook to public utilities immediately. And that works out our, our grand plan for looping the systems. and. Kind of. Yeah, for, for looping the water system, there would be an easement through the property that would provide the easement corridor, but the water loop um, would would be at a later date if, yep. if it's required to connect across the freeway. Right. This would then be a 2018 project. Okay. Perfect. All right. Anyone want to make a motion to approve or deny this agreement? I'll make a motion to approve the development agreement. Okay. Second. All right. Any other discussions? I got a question. What sure. if um, it takes a little bit longer to get this done across here and then they build their facility? Uh, well, what are they going to do for sewer and water? I, if it's not available to them when they have their plant, then they 
if something happens or it's a little bit behind, I mean, they got to have the stuff to work and be open and operating. I think from what I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, by the time they get their equipment and they order the plant and do everything, it's going to be It'll about be that long, yeah. So okay. I don't think that's a problem. Well, you know right. The, city, the right. city engineer was not concerned when we met as a staff that we couldn't get that done in this time frame, given that we're still early in the year. Right. But Dennis, I don't know if you want to address that question. No, if, if we um, approve the development agreement, we'll probably come back very soon about um, authorizing a feasibility study, or we could do that now. Yeah, I think run. yeah, I think that would be a good uh, second motion. We don't have it on the agenda, but a second motion would be to sure. to direct if, if it passes. We'll it look passes. at that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Nope. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Maybe. The ayes have it. So to that point, since it passed, we'll talk about that. Feasibility study. So, what, what would the motion curtail, Dennis? Extending a uh, city of sewer and water from uh, existing terminus on West Freeway Drive under 35 down to the west southerly entrance. Of the motion would be to do the feasibility study. Correct. So, I'm going to want to make a motion to do a feasibility study to extend the sewer and water. So moved. Second. Uh, I don't know. I think Mark got that. Mark got it? Okay. I think so. What do you got, Jessica? <laughs> All right. Any other discussions on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. The ayes have it again. Okay. Uh, anything else? So. The last item is the animal control uh, contract. As you know, we had to switch providers. Uh, the one that's in the main agenda packet uh, was marked up a bit, um, not su significantly, but essentially provides the substantive terms for providing that contract. So you've got You've got a version in the handouts that's just been a little more refined because our office took a look at it and made some suggested changes. Okay. That's on A14? Yes. It's, uh, yeah, A A15 through 19. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I was impressed with the gentleman, so what do you guys think? Go for it. So I want to make up questions on it. Okay, go ahead. I find them here. On the handout or in the. Well, you probably want to work from the A4. Uh, handout A15. A15. Mm -hmm. A15. All right, hold on a second here. Okay, so they, they hold the animals five days. Is that, is that, and they charge the city $28 a day if, if he's not picked up, if the animal's not picked up, is that correct? My understanding is the five days, that's what stat state statute requires you to hold it five days. Okay, and charge the city if he's not picked up by the owner. That is the current practice, yes, or the proposed practice, yes. How much do we have in our budget for that? We have something in there for animal I control. We, I don't think we budget, we don't, we don't budget for it. I don't think there is a, budget, a line item budget. So we probably should. A little bit. I don't know. What do we spend last year? I'd have to look at it. Okay, it's not a lot. It's really not a lot. It doesn't happen very often, but it, on occasion it's it does less than a thousand dollars. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask Next about question. the uh, veterinarian. I'm checking the two different ones here. Veterinarian expenses. So if the owner doesn't pick them up, the, the city's on hook for all veterinarian expenses. I mean, yeah. they could have a dog hit by a car and and a lot of surgery, and the city's going to be paying. Thousand or two for that? Do you think? I don't you think they put it to sleep at that point? Well, would they? I don't know. I don't know if they would or not. I suppose it says illogical, wasn't it? Um, well, it says non-emergency must be non-emergency must be approved by the city administrator in writing. Um, kind of question is: is what about emergency? Oh, it says here: emergency vet veterinary care shall not exceed a hundred dollars without notice. See that? Uh, that's item Did number four. Item four, last item. Item so you four. Added bill? Somebody must have. Oh. Yeah. Oh, good okay. catch. Jake caught it before you did. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. $100. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing. You, we don't want them no, spending two thousand dollars on a dog that gets but, put yeah, to sleep. Anything else? As much as I love dogs. Yeah. All right. I'd entertain a motion to uh, approve or deny this uh, we'll make a agreement. We'll approve the animal impound facility agreement. Second. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? No. You want to get one in? You're going to get one. We're we'll we'll going to get the next one. Okay. Right. Just slow down then. <laughs> All right. Further discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 
Okay. Anything else? No. That's it for you. Until, uh, yep. First. Okay. Council meeting. Uh, council reports. Denny. I have a, a meeting tomorrow for the sunrise, and I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm hoping somebody could fill in for me. Okay. Who's that? Who's your backup? Tomorrow evening. I'm busy. You're the backup. No. We don't have a backup for some. We don't backup. Mark can do it. Uh. I know I can't. Okay. Well, if you do what you, I, I have to miss it. If you can't find us back in, we just we just won't go. Somebody okay. won't be there. It's been all last year we didn't go, so one more day won't. I guess go. that'll work. I'm gonna try my darnest to make it the next time. Okay. You want to go, Jeff? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, anything else? No, that's all I have. Okay. Bill? No, I've got nothing. Really. Nothing. Mark? Um, let's see. We had a uh, park board meeting in January. Uh, nothing's really changed there except uh, they're talking about possibly increasing the fees for the ball fields because they've been Low. pretty flat for many years and there's such a high demand for the field. So they're doing a study to see what the other areas are at. But... That would be about the thing to increase. That'd be for next year, though, not this oh, year. Oh, not this year. Okay. There's a high demand for them. I mean, <coughs> oh, yeah, and they're good fields. Yeah. So that's it. Okay. Nothing. Cable Commission? No. Not in the report? Didn't have one. No. No. <laughs> okay. It wasn't more of the, our last meeting I had one. We, uh, we all met with the city. That was a good meeting I thought we had about the new potential new interchange. Otherwise, I, I don't have anything. Public works report, anything? No. Okay. Public information coordinator report. Nothing. Nothing. City administrator report. In your packets, um, you had a, a personnel committee report. A20 is, a, is an updated report. The first item on, on our report is there are two employees that are eligible for step increases for the month of March, and the recommendation is, the recommendation by the city administrator based on performance is that uh, Jim Winnings, that our public works superintendent, and Larry Mew, Lemieux, who's our um, deputy clerk, um, we recommend that they, have, they get step increases as indicated. Okay, you want to take these separately? Probably should. Um, yes, I think so. Okay, so let's discuss that. You know, what I would like to see is a five or seven year back, going back and what the raises were and step increases and all that. Because when we see this, there's, there's, no, there's no history on it. So I just, I, it's hard for me to vote on something. I don't know what the history is. If they're up for a step increase, I suppose they're up for a step increase. So What, what makes them eligible? A step increase are... are we have a seven steps, and uh, based on performance each year, if you if you perform well, you're up for a step increase. Okay. Each year. Each year. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I think, you know, to answer your question, Jeff, you would go back. You know what I mean? If if Jim is on step five, that means you know what I mean. He. He received five step increases. Now, whether that was over five years or whether it was over, so, you know what I mean? How long has he well, lived he here? started on step three, I think. There's something like that, three or four, three. I don't know. Yeah. It, what changed when he, his position changed, too? Well, he got a raise for that and then the step yeah. increase. Higher, it's coming on step two or three, I don't know which. Well, I mean, the step system is what it is. It's yep. how we work here, so. Yeah. Oh, I see that. Any other question? No. Okay. Anyone else? So we want to make a motion to uh, approve these recommendations from the city administrator on these two step increases. So moved. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. Next. So. We have, uh, currently we had three positions open. We had an accountant position, administrative technician position, and a planning commission secretary um, position. We placed ads for all three. We got, um, we received six applications for the accountant, and we interviewed three. In this particular case, city staff and personnel committee interviewed them 
all at once instead of doing it in two different sessions. At this time, the personnel committee recommends that the city offer the accountant position at 24 hours to William Warner at an hourly rate of 2367 per hour. This position does not include medical or, or sick time benefits, but, he is, but it is eligible for, for benefits on a prorated basis with the understanding that he would be eligible for a step increase um, after six months based on performance. And Mr. Warner is in the audience tonight. Okay. Welcome. <coughs> um, I was wondering why you're here. There it is. <laughs> He's watching you. There it is. <laughs> um, all right. Anyone have any questions? The interview process went well, and it was a tough choice, but we had to choose. So, questions? I'm glad we're having somebody fill the position. Okay. All right. I'd entertain a motion to approve this. Uh, uh, what are we going to say here? We're going to approve the personnel committee recommendation. How's that? Who is the person? Are you on the personnel committee? Bill and I know. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to do something here, otherwise I don't no, do anything. I, thought we, I thought we stopped that. Motion to approve the uh, personnel recommendation for the account. Okay. Bill Warner. Do have a second? second? All right. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Welcome aboard. The second motion to that accountant position is to approve the 2018 um, pay scale as amended. Okay. Someone make a motion to approve that pay scale? So moved. Second. Thanks, Bill. We've been waiting, have we? I know, he's slow on the draw today. I quit. Did you? I didn't have a choice. Oh. All right, any other discussion? So, this pay scale here we're raising on the bottom here? No, it's a new pay scale. The, the, the revised pay scale will be the new the new pay scale. Yes. <coughs> okay. Okay. Why why is it I mean, why is it revised? Why when if you want them to start at that price here, why don't you start them at step two? Why are we revising the pay scale? We're raising uh, it all. When I looked at the market and when I looked at what what was posted, um, we were twenty two seventy two is on the very low end for an accountant. And so I, I adjusted it for a market. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Get it. So, earlier this week, city staff held some interviews, um, and those interviews were for the administrative technician position and also for the planning commission secretary. We, did, we held those interviews on Monday. And the city staff recommendation and motion for the planning commission secretary that's 24 hours a month generally is that we hire Ro Rochelle Bush <coughs> subject to a favorable reference check at an hourly rate of $17.62 per hour. And this particular position does not include any benefits with the exception of Okay. Rochelle is a Columbus resident. Glad, uh, glad we found somebody. I recommend we take the recommendation, but do you guys want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. Okay. Second. All right, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The last position that we interviewed for was the administrative technician position, and this is a position that's going to help out the building department and administrative department. Um, during a few work days up to 15 hours. We did some interview, uh, interviewing and it is our recommendation that we offer that position to Jeff St. Martin, subject to a favorable reference check at an hourly rate of $17.62, including prorate eligible benefits. In this particular case, um, would not be eligible for medical or sick time benefits but would be eligible for holiday if it landed on a day of regular work and or vacation with the understanding that he would be eligible for a step increase in six months based on performance. So, I mean, I, I don't know if I asked this before, but because he's going to be working for the building uh, inspector, those funds should come out of the building they fund will. then? They will. Go. The wages will be allocated to the building department. But I thought he's going to be doing scanning and other things too. He will. So half his half his wages will be allocated to the building department, okay. and half his wages 
would be el or allocated to the admin. Okay. And that's why the building department under FTE, it says 1.125. That one two five will be allocated to the building department. So the one point is Leon. So I mean, last fall, obviously, the staff was inundated with lots of extra paperwork. <clears throat> will this this will help? Will this help expedite building permits? Because that was one of the things last fall that there was lots of concern about. We weren't getting our stuff out quick enough. Correct. So um, I had a. a discussion with Jesse and we we brainstormed a little bit yesterday and we have a job description and it is on my intent because right now um, there are several things that are under my on my plate let's just say mm -hmm. and one of the things is the zoning for building permits and it is my intention that Jesse will put a checklist together that that I go through in my mind but I don't necessarily have it written down we're gonna write it down and we're gonna delegate it to, I'm gonna delegate it to Jeff because I think that if he can go through the checklist, review all the billing per permits first, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I can just scan over it and then hand it to Leon. I don't have to pull out all the books and look at everything in detail as long as we have a checklist. Well, I mean, I know Leon's a very detailed guy. So I mean, will this help speed that up, his portion of it at all? Well, the zoning, the zoning portion will be, will be a lot quicker, which I think, I actually think I was the lag in the system um, in, in reviewing it for zoning. And in this particular case, um, Jeff will also be able to do answer phone calls and schedule inspections. What happens with Leon is he's, you know, he has his day scheduled, he's out on inspections, people are calling. People are calling for next day's inspections, but he's not here. So by the time he gets back, he's looking at all those phone calls. Meanwhile, he has to do plan review. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's one of those things where I think if we have someone who's answering the phone, doing scheduling inspections, that will help him and give him more time for plan review. Because plan review is the one that we do inspections first, you know, and then we answer the phone, then we do plan review. So. Because I think he's going to be a busy guy. He's gonna. We're all, we're starting to get busy, so it is our intention that um, we're hoping that Jeff will be able to streamline that process. Why does he take he takes calls during the day? I mean, I, I know when I call for an electrical inspection, it's eight thirty, and you're done, and you gotta wait till tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, I think they call all day for inspections. You ever been able to talk to an inspector during the day? No. They no. To me during the day. Okay. So the staff recommendation to hire Jeff St. Martin stands, I believe. Okay, so someone want to make a motion to take the recommendation from the staff? We'll move. Okay. Second. Another second from Bill. <clears throat> okay, any other discussion on that? Um, what if they, you get really busy, you need a little bit more hours from them? Uh, he is open. He is open to more hours. Okay. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor, did you want to do your appointment? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there is two things here. Um, I'll, let me do this one first. So, back to the, the 180th, 170th street debacle that we really need to put some pros and cons together for which one our city is going to want to go for. And um, and I think then we need a resolution coming back. Is that what I remember hearing? From us, or I thought you guys were going to meet with the other cities first. Yeah, but you guys need to get give us some of your pros and cons. And well, maybe we could get some from the city uh, staff. I don't know, JW, if you know about that. I can go over that later with you, but there, <clears throat> I have a map here I'll show you, but, um, so I, I think if we're gonna have a meeting and set up a meeting, but if, you know, probably wanna get, I wanna represent what you guys see, feel was the right thing, the right way to go. Well, you know, what our, most of our concerns was is that County Road 54 is tied into that. Right. Sure. 
I mean, they first were going to go over the top of it, and that's just made no the, sense. Right? Made no sense. We need to have access south. I mean, if that doesn't go through, and the 170th was to go through instead, then we would have to try and get on ramps and off ramps off of West Freeway Drive. Right. For our own, you know. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's why would we even why would we even get involved in this? County Road 54 has some yeah. access south. So. Okay. So if anybody has any pros and cons, get them to me. The next. I, I drove the uh, area this morning, and 180th, uh, I can't see any better, but very little benefit to Columbus for that. 170th, you mean? 180th. Oh, why? It just, there's no road. We got no road connected to it. We have to put a road in. No, it's going to connect over to 54. No, I'm talking, it, it won't, from, from 180th to the freeway, there's no road. 180th. There, Forest Lake is going to, it's in Forest Lake. No. It's in Columbus. No, Denny's right. There is no, road, no road, road there. From Lyon Street to the highway no and then from the highway over to 54. We are well, there is no road. Yeah, we don't have a road there, but the, it's the whole thing is a new interchange. And that, that's the, the beauty of doing it is that we're not buying acquisition, high-value high high value property, buildings. Put it where there is no road, so it's cheaper, I think is the theory. I agree. I think the other one is it's Fourth Avenue. One yeah. seventieth. One seven. I, I'm in favor of that there. The seven one seventieth. Yes. Okay. So then we would need some. Now we what, would need to somehow get some. How are you going to? You're not going to get across the the swamp to connect to 35W. That's never. You, you get to 54. That's right. That's the thing. You get to 54. You get to 54, and that's it. Yeah. But we still don't have the southbound situation taken care of with off 54 to go south on 35w if 180 went through where would it dump to on on the jump in the tri triangle wouldn't right, it? right below the asphalt plant right below below that it'd go right on the edge of the asphalt plant okay you sure exactly i know for sure okay. yes that's why they had that flyover on the bridge going down and coming yeah. off yeah I, I it was green last night it was new to me and i i uh, I haven't had a chance to really study it yet. So. I'll, um, I'll go down there if you want to, because I, I think at first when Ben talked about it, it sounded a little far-fetched. But I think the more I think about it and, and the, the pros that um, Ryan came up with made a lot of sense. I mean, he, he, the fact that there's nothing there, it's easier to develop. Yeah. 170th would be the backup to that bridge like Howard Lake is, or what we call Howard Lake. But <clears throat> so... Well, yeah, the, I mean, part, I, the part where I walked in yeah. is where they were talking about they're out of commercial property. They are, so right. So they want to develop, have some more commercial property on the south end of town, which right. means that would open that up yeah. plus more houses. So he, they're talking that could be a new Broadway, you know, a yeah, new I, large, I that, yeah, right? That, yeah. where, it, was, it was Forest Lake, benefit to Forest Lake five times or ten times over to, to, to Columbus. I can't see that much. Uh, it's benefit to us because our whole south end of the freeway district would yeah, have access. That, that's, that's huge the only thing benefit. I could see benefit to get the south end of the freeway that's, district across that's, both sides. That's not just a little thing. That's a big yeah, thing. That's I know it. Thing. Yeah, especially the truck traffic for future. Yeah, that would get all that truck traffic off there. It would. Uh, <clears throat> um, this is just a, a put forth the effort effort to put it into comp plans. Uh, no, I think it's more than that. I think it's to get the comp plans in, in alignment as well as. Um, get a actual plan done so that we can present it to the the, uh, the, the DOT and well the DOT the MnDOT. You need a feasibility study before you can yep. present, it, present it to them. Yep. I would like to see what uh, the other two cities have in, in uh, what they they think about it. Yeah. Well, I'll we'll find that out. And that's then. a good idea. We'll go from there. Well, the feasibility <laughs> study isn't it just showing support for the project. Right. No, it actually is technical, right, oh, Dennis? Technical. It's got road, it's got count, car counts, and you have to go formal feasibility study. Yeah, costs. And so, what do you? I know the feasibility study, but the, the resolution for support is different, though. That's just the city right. supporting the project. Yeah. So we don't need the, just that conceptual plans. We just yeah. have to have the, the support before we go ahead with the feasibility right. study. And and whether you pick 180th or one seventieth, it's. It really doesn't matter. We need to just be united. And I agree. That, yeah. You know, yeah. even, I mean, you got to say one, one 80th, one one eightieth or nothing. You'd pick one eightieth. Say what? If you 70th. could pick one eightieth or nothing. No, no, no. 70th. No, no. no, my point is, if you could pick, 
for Dennis, he doesn't really want 180th, so I'm saying the oh. negative for him. I'd rather have County Road 4 over the 180, but if we can't get it, 180 would suffice. Yeah, okay, that's exactly what I thought you'd say. And that might be the easy route to go. Unfortunately, we still need our access to 35W right. on and off. Right, and the closer, with the 180th, it's closer to that 54 mm -hmm. on and off axis. And uh, Ryan had a really good idea, Dennis, about hooking in with the, uh, um, right directly to the property, the city line, city lower limit there. Okay, so we'll, we'll go with that. Um, and then the next thing that I have here is the appointment for the EDA. Um, this John's application, I didn't see it in here. It's the application isn't in there, but it, certainly if anybody wants a copy, I mean we have a copy. John Roush's application, he applied. This is the second time he's applied yep. for the for the EDA. I was just going through my records and I found his first one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would uh, I would recommend that we appoint him. So uh, the next meeting is in April, so that's yeah. why I, I was. Yeah. Trying to get people if, we're, if we have a um, pool of people to get yeah I, right now we have five we have two vacant seats. two open seats yeah so I mean my recommendation is we go with them but um, I have two other people to get a hold of so do so you want to make that appointment tonight or you want to I mean you can we can do it tonight or we can do it um, <laughs> if you want to make the appointment and then if other council members I can put in in the next packet I know you're not going to be here, but I can put it in the next packet if they want to see the, the application. Yeah, hey, you guys, you want to see the application first, or? I mean, I'm good with it. We still got one more spot to do, so. Right, I had to make that appointment. He's applied yet. twice, so. Yeah. What do you guys think? I should bring him aboard. So okay. you need a motion to? Then I'd, I'll make the appointment. You make the appointment. I make the appointment. Ratify. So I'd, then I'd accept the motion to ratify my appointment. Anyone motion want to, to ratify it? Ratify my appointment. Motion to ratify your appointment. Second. Okay. It's gonna you gonna get these right. It's gonna go Bill, Danny, Danny, Bill, Bill, Danny, Danny, Bill. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Uh, how come he didn't? Uh, if we had one vacancy for a long time, when did he apply last time? Uh, four or five years ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. It had a really old date on it. So. Okay, um, hearing nothing else, uh, call for a vote. Aye. 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 So that'll work. Okay, and then I'll bring another appointment to you in a month or so. Is uh, Tracy <coughs> still on it? Or? No. No. She resigned. Didn't she resign, though? She, had, she sent a letter of non her term, her term expired, and then she sent a letter that she wanted to be reappointed, but then she rescinded her. That's right. I knew there was something there. All right. Uh, I don't think we have anything. Uh, you want to do your, so you did your treasury report? I have nothing to report. Okay. <laughs> Good. Now I can check that one off. All right. So I guess that, no, let's continue on with Dean then, now that Dean's here. And we'll go back to uh, Garth, if you want to come back up talk about the the uh, comp plan questions and I think the big one of the big things that was of interest was rural diversified rural and rural residential and the diverse tell me if I got this right the rural residential is what we have now and we're at a one in ten, <coughs> which averages out with Carlos Avery and all the swamps to one in five. So anytime we want to do anything other than that, we have to go to the comp plan to amend for that each individual instance today. Otherwise, we go to this new designation, and then we would have at our disposal the wand, magic wand, to change that density willy-dilly. Is that correct? If I may, I'll try to... <coughs> clarify the sequence of events. Uh, it was probably two years ago that Elizabeth and I met with um, our sector representative and the planning manager from the Metropolitan Council. And at that time, talked about if there was to be any flexibility that the city wished to pursue beyond the current five acre lot size or maximum density that 
we currently have in the community, we were discussing changing our designation from diversified rural to rural residential. <clears throat> we were pursuing that course and had discussed that with the Planning Commission uh, that with the update of the comprehensive plan, arguments would be made by the community about the uniqueness. Uh, part of that is we're at the end of the system for metropolitan sewer. We're bounded on the north and the west by major portions of land owned by the DNR. And two thirds of our community is in wetland, which makes it extremely expensive to put public sewer and water, even if we attempted to provide that throughout the community. And so part of that argument was that the city ought to have some flexibility to initiate a potential future change in that density. We weren't making the argument about what that density was per se in the comprehensive plan, but that you would not be able to change your five acre standard without making that case in the comprehensive plan. In December, we were informed by the planning manager at the Metropolitan Council that a policy decision was made by the entire council that they were not going to allow any uh, extension of that rural residential designation. They're going to treat them all as legal non-conforming areas, but not expand it. However, they made it clear that a community that was designated diversified rural could make the same argument that this description of rural residential uh, always had, which was you more or less established your own lot size. As the mayor mentioned, um, our previous comprehensive plan noted how we were consistent with the Metropolitan Council's one home per 10 acre density standard by averaging all of the wetlands in the community and simply saying it, it really comes out to our five acre minimum lot size. They accepted that. Um, they noted some challenges um, to the logic and wisdom that we put in the plan, but what is different is that they will not hold any particular community that chooses to make arguments why they should have a different density from one to 10. Um, within that rural diversified area. So we had our comprehensive plan open house uh, a week ago, a couple of weeks ago on the 15th. Um, and we had 30 people turn in uh, a comment form. Uh, one of those questions was, do you favor a change in the five acre standard? And there were seven that said they did. Uh, would like to see some higher density and 20 that didn't. This is my third comprehensive plan with the um, city of Columbus, and this has been an issue at every one of these junctures. My point was not to abandon the direction the Planning Commission has had uh, for us to pursue. It is just the realization in some private conversation with all of you uh, that you're not all in favor of this. And this is a significant effort on our behalf to go through this and make it a component of the comprehensive plan. And as my memo stated uh, to you, it takes four votes. It's a super majority to adopt a comprehensive plan. So if there are two of you that aren't in favor of it, I'd rather know that today than go through a public hearing, perhaps anger people that are not in favor of that change, and then have you say, well, we don't want that anyway. So I'm looking for any informal direction that you have at this time that says, you think it's a good idea that we make these arguments but that we don't determine what that density change is in the comprehensive plan, but we establish that option. So diversified would make the designation we could go to two and a half acres. Whatever that particular standard is, within the current designation the Metropolitan Council has assigned to us, uh, we simply make that same argument as if we were going to request a change to their other designation, rural residential, which they said, we're not gonna allow. So go ahead and do it in this. The issue is, if you make no change, you could not consider a different density or lot size without doing a comprehensive plan amendment. And I think the direction of the Planning Commission is, 
by s establishing this argument in the document itself, it gives you that right to do it, but that becomes a whole new process after the plan is adopted, including text amendments and other things before you could make that change. But if you decide not to do that, then the debate is moot unless you decide to amend the comprehensive plan and make that argument. So, so, so <coughs> Dean, so give, there was an interesting conversation we had with Forest Lake last night. So that track that's up against Forest Lake that yep. we talked about, did they talk about, was it how many homes? It wasn't a couple hundred, was it? Yeah, it was, it was you, a couple You mean hundred. within the city, if there within was sewer available? But up against, yeah, that sewer we found out last night does not have to come across the highway. It's already stubbed in at the end of one of their developments already on this side and would have to go through, it already could go through in one of the neighbor's properties in Forest Lake. But they, at this time, the guy was not interested in letting them cross. It doesn't mean it can't change. But so if we do, if we do the diversified, we could actually bring those lot. We could do those lots, right? Hooked up to sewer and water. <coughs> I it guess was, uh, the better, I, you know what you're saying, Bill. The question is, it, if we go to diversified rural, how do we protect the greater Columbus for? density change because if we if we choose that option any council in the near future can just go with a simple motion change it to two and a half and the whole city changes and my concern is that the city all the rules all the laws all the reasons people moved out here was about the five acres and if you switch to two and a half or two or one or whatever you, they happen to choose under that designation it's going to affect snowball effect all our our laws about dogs and fences and front yards and backyards and <coughs> lots uh road frontage i mean it's a huge thing so it's huge. i would like to see properties that are able to be developed on the sewer system properties that are going <coughs> to benefit you know in those higher density areas to to be allowed but not necessarily the greater the greater columbus and that, and that raises a complete different issue the sewer proposition is not a component of diversified rural that is a whole different designation and so it would be requesting that another part of the community where such urban services were available be designated the same as the freeway corridor it has nothing to do with diversified rural so if your position is we don't want to change our current rural residential with the exception of one or two areas that might have sewer extensions that's a different procedure to do that in this current comprehensive plan and using the example on broadway and and services through forest lake we'd have to have an inner community uh, service agreement and the feasibility studies would need to be completed the last time that um, we met with the city engineer they indicated that there was not enough capacity in their existing trunk sewer system to serve it all of- It needed an upgrade, yeah. Pardon? It needed an upgrade. Right. And that included a section of sewer that would have to go under the freeway. They would have to increase the sewer pipe under 35 mm -hmm. to serve that northwest corner. So the fact that there's existing capacity, it, it's one property away from Columbus, doesn't overcome the issue that if they gave that capacity to Columbus, well, they but shot I think it was, a, in the foot it was an because upgrade in the future. It wasn't necessarily something they needed to do right away because they're not using their full capacity. It's if they filled out their capacity, then it would have to be. And, and then, then the issue is if I'm in Forest Lakes position, I, I, I'd want to be certain before I granted that sure. option that you agreed to participate at what cost? Yeah. All of that feasibility information is not done. We literally have three, four months to complete our comp plan. If that, if that type of project on that particular, it, it was really one property that came up for interest. Big property though. That would be a separate comprehensive plan amendment at some point in the future, if and when it happens. Um, what you're saying is we stay status quo, except that there's city sewer hookup water, it's a totally different deal. It, it becomes a different, we have to amend, uh, Dennis does a, what's called a 
a tier one and a tier two study for all of our sewer districts. Tier one is the establishment of the district. Tier two breaks it down into sub-districts and, and sewer flows and other things. We haven't, we haven't got any of that preparation. We're, right. we're six months to sure. a year out. If a developer came and put an application on the table and said, we want to do it, and Forest Lake said, we're, we're happy to help. Sure. So we didn't pursue that option because the developers never come and talk to us again once they found out what some of these costs were. Yep. Doesn't mean they've disappeared, but they don't have a proposal in front of us. Elizabeth and I also met with the city of Lionel Lakes in a similar fashion saying, is there any opportunity not to open up great areas of Columbus, but is there an opportunity on Lake Drive coming up uh, from Main Street in, in Lino to provide at least sewer and water to the, uh, the business corridor. Mm -hmm. At that time, they said a similar response that Forest Lake did. We've got a whole series of our own trunk lines between our Metropolitan Interceptor and this, and none of them have that capacity to serve you. The option was there was no new undeveloped area where it would be easy to say, oh, let's put the big pipe in here and then we can share that with you. We'd be coming back through existing development areas, tearing up streets and replacing sewer pipes to have capacity for that. We did not pursue that option. Right. Let me just um, check me if I'm going in the wrong direction here. But to address the mayor's question, uh, couldn't if, if it if it benefits the community and that's the council's decision to go to diversified rural in part because rural residential is now kind of a non-conforming category. Uh, couldn't you, if, if the council so desires, have a series of policy considerations within this the amendment that says kind of when and if the gives guidance to future councils when and if you would go to increase density not on a sewer system. In other words, it doesn't completely tie a future council's hands, but it says to the community, this is how we would consider this question. And there are many options. It is taking your existing five acre and say anybody that's got five acres now uh, can split it into two, two and a half acres. It can be, we're not gonna allow that option except in a handful of remaining undeveloped areas. There are a lot of policy directions to do it and any of those can be put in the comprehensive plan, which do tend to tie your hands, if you will. The less you say in the comprehensive plan, other than we don't want to be considered one per 10, we've been one per five since 1959, and now we're considering something greater than that, a higher density that'll be resolved through zoning amendments. Your concern is that's carte blanche, takes three votes, anybody can do whatever they want. Right. If you want more serious discussion, we either have that and put the caveats that, that Bill is um, suggesting in the comprehensive plan itself, and then we have to follow that guide. So, so I guess I'd pose the question to the council right now. I mean, does the council think that uh, two and a half acres across Columbus is a good idea? So I, I'll, I'll comment on that. Okay. Right off the bat. So we listen to the people, the 21 people and the seven people. That's okay. I understand them wanting to keep their piece of heaven or whatever the way it is. However, we've got landowners and we've got massive <coughs> wetland issues to deal with. I don't think it would be that many houses, even if it went to two and a half acres, would be an issue. We've got neighborhoods right over here where they're on one acre lots and they have these big parties and they love being in their neighborhood in Columbus. They're tight neighborhoods. Uh, whether that makes any difference or not. I'm just saying, I don't. if we went to diversified, I don't think we're gonna end up with that many houses. And the property owner, the developer, where does their rights end to develop their property and utilize it to the max, you know what I'm saying? So I don't think there's, I won't think there's that many Lots. I mean, we said 500 at one time. I bet it ain't 300 or 400 by the time you're done with all the wetland stuff. But I, I think but Bill, my, my point is, and I've done a lot of thinking about this in the past few months, is, yeah, the new developments, maybe I wouldn't care so much, but 
you're opening Pandora's box. Everybody's got five acres. No, yeah, it's just going to say that. Acres. You have common driveways. It's yep. just going to flood the city. With you got you got our pencil lots. So everybody yeah. with a five acre pencil lot is going to cut the back. Well, two and a half off. Everywhere. I just don't want. And, and when I was campaigning, I bet there was eighty percent of people. Oh, said, yeah. First question: Do you favor five acre lots? Well, and I and I understand that. So I just looked at my neighborhood just to drive through to see where the wetlands are. Where first of all, I'm on ten. We're on ten acres. We'd never be able to subdivide it unless you put the driveway. I, I had that argument at a tax meeting where they said well, you guys can put another lot in there. Well, they'd have to go right down front of our house. It's wetlands on one side, wetlands on the other side. You know, it would never work. Did you fill all those wetlands? <laughs> just kidding. I don't think so, not yet. Uh, but anyways, I'm just saying there's probably one lot on our road where they could actually do it and there's a wetland area, they, they'd have to cut the road through to get to it. It's small, maybe the size of this room. So that might even, not even be able to get done. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm we, on a fence. We, we, we changed the rule so that we can have two and a half acre lots so long as the average is, is five. And that allows people to put these little cul-de-sacs, put a row of nice houses around it. And it's happened how many times in our city so far? We've got two proposals now under that yeah and and it, and it looks nice i mean well actually the tur the turkey farm thurnbeck thing has got a lot of that in there right yeah he'd like to go down to two and a half for sure if he could throughout but yeah right so so for that sole reason um i'm not going to support two and a half acre lots throughout throughout right. and i'm not going to i don't want to make it for future next council a couple guys come up and change it all over either i okay. i want to keep it status quo as we have it right now Jeff, uh, it's a big decision. But yeah. I think that's best for the city right now and the people. That's what the people are going to want. Jeff, what do you how do you weigh in? Yeah, I agree with Mark. I think uh, yeah. parts with sewer and water can handle sure. more housing, but I think uh, so. That's road. three, Bill or Bill. Thanks. What's your name? Denny. <laughs> 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 two and a half acre Denny. I got two dentists down there. Right? <laughs> can't go wrong, right? I'm two and a half acres. You know that. You are. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we got one on the fence, one for two and a half, and three for. So I don't think you have your super majority there. So th that that would hopefully lead you down the path of okay, what what should we pick then to best fill the city in our comp plan? I, I think what would help us because I work in a vacuum if I'm not in a meeting with all of you when I'm with the planning commission, and I'm not saying that in any mean or bad way it's just if their direction isn't going to happen i don't want to invest a lot of time to go through the metropolitan council make this argument and it comes to you i also don't want to go to a public hearing and have 50 people chase me away from a podium which happened 20 years ago <laughs> if you're not going to support this well i think you got you just got your answer you're not going to support this right no. correct it's okay. not going to happen there's no so you I, i'm going to i'm going to just chime in here because they can give you that direction tonight and, and change their mind and they can change their minds and and that's yep. i understand so, that i'm not i'm not saying they will yep. i'm not saying but but one of the parts of this process is that you hear all the <clears throat> testimony all the evidence so this is direction and just for the record this is direction on this night not to pursue the higher density um but it's not a decision it's not a decision because the public gets to weigh in and all sorts of things get to happen before a final but decision. he asks the question yep. should he go down the path and the answer is no because tonight we don't agree with it exactly right so and, and that's fine that's good direction and it probably saves the community a lot of heartache but you may be you may have a hundred people show up on the night of the hearing and say well you heard from 37 people or 27 people and now here's the other 130 people you know I'm just saying the the way that I'll bet you a steak dinner over that one. <laughs> You're probably right. I, I'm not trying to preserve any option other than to say the legal process cannot be determined until there I, until there's a public hearing until that, it's done. Yep, until and, it's done. And that's fair. And I think perfect if, decision if, from a lawyer. If the majority of people said why why didn't you pursue the planning commission direction, or if the planning commission insists that we do this, uh, and I'm forced to lay out two alternatives. And, and let you vote it up or down at that point in time. So, so Garth, explain the process of why you guys recommended that. I was doing the inventory maps. We calculated up high ground. We, one good thing about this, we'll never have to hear about rooftops again because if <laughs> we don't go this route, 
there's no need to talk about rooftops anymore. Yeah, well, the, for the higher density areas, that'll add to our rooftops. Well, that's I'm going to get to that too because yeah. I think I think Dean's actual question was citywide. Nobody's talked about specific areas of 2.5, like the land you're talking about over yeah. by Forest Lake. Right. So that you know, you guys have covered the citywide 2.5 acre deal, but not the specific zoned area that you know. And I, and I think. And I think, and I won't speak for you guys, but I think we have a consensus here that we would all support that. Is that correct? On a sewer system? There's sewer system. Lots? Sewer hookup, yeah. Some sort of covenants or some sort of minimum size or cost or something? 2.5 so. acres with city. <clears throat> no, no, lots. I mean, houses right next to each other, all hooked up to sewer and water. Okay, I mean, they so were. Going back to Forest Lake where the sewer is not there. It needs to be upgraded all the way into the freeway, and it may not ever happen. It's, well, it's, let's say it's, that guy it's wants. There, Garth. It will happen. Dave said it doesn't need to be upgraded now because they're not using it. Right. So they they have fifty percent. Say they have fifty percent left, and we're using ten percent. Okay. So, so you, this was a two faceted deal. It was you know you could go citywide two and a half acres, yeah. or you could take that was one property that we talked about in specific that maybe that particular chunk of land could be developed into 2.5 acre lots. Not, we never talked about city sewer connections or anything like that. Or it that. might even be smaller than that. Well, well with sewer they could be, yeah. yeah. But no, you could go down, you said about an acre and a half, right? With, with a well and septic, I mean, theoretically it's b lower limit. You can go to half an acre of upland under state rules. Yeah, which is pretty small, uh, so. And again, <clears throat> nobody's promoted two and a half. That's just, that's just a number that's come out, yeah. like you double your density. So that, all of that becomes a, a policy issue. This could be a three acre, it could be a three and a half. I think the point of the Planning Commission or after 10. our last meeting was, if we don't do this in this comp plan, at a future time that the council wishes to go into this direction, you just need to do a comp plan, that, an amendment. I mean, you don't wait another 10 years to make that decision. And it's the same with if sewer were to become available and you had an application for property adjacent to Forest Lake, that's another comp plan <coughs> amendment. Mm -hmm. It's not extraordinary. It's a few thousand dollars. The sewered project will take a little longer just because there's a lot more engineering that needs to be done with that. Otherwise, a, a change where you make an argument on the rural density standard is n not that complicated. And if what you're saying is you'd rather let a future council that wants to go through a both comp plan and zoning process to make that decision, that's fine. This is all your policy. I'm not driving any part of this other than having a little sanity on how I finish the project. Okay. Well, that takes care of Mark's concern because yeah. you wouldn't redo the comp plan just to do a five-acre split. No, no. You 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 wouldn't be doing any mapping or anything. You'd just be presenting those same arguments on why your community is different from the majority. And right now, several of your neighbors to the west are two and a half acre lot communities, and they have that rural residential designation. It's, it's not rocket science to me that you would probably win this argument, but if your heart's not in it, it's hard to justify going through this process. But I agree with Bill. I mean, I, I'm not looking for anything other than kind of a non-binding nod which way you're headed, because if it ain't gonna happen, I don't wanna put my heart in it. I okay. think you got it. You got it. So was there any other concerns that you needed nope. talked about? And we will not be putting in that plan anything regarding Broadway and sewer at this time without an application, without somebody driving that decision. But again, if that came up even in six months, uh, you can go and do that amendment easily. So one of the things I remember from sitting out there 10 years ago was the corner of uh, Potomac and Broadway, the corner of Kettle River and Broadway, talking about <clears throat> some sort of zoning for gas station retail, uh, and, and that seemed to get a lot of pushback from the, from the residents. Is that something you thought about, considered at all? It's these other little pockets of... Uh, I remember those meetings too, there was a lot of pushback and it just, it was about as bad as the fight that going from five to two and a half acres. It seemed like it, like, yeah. We, we talked about it over a year ago, uh, earlier on in this process. Do you want to revisit that? We had a lot of neighborhood meetings. We, we had them expanding 
the Lake Drive um, commercial industrial area, we had them on Kettle River and, and Broadway, as you mentioned. And uh, there wasn't any support. And the Planning Commission this time said it, it doesn't seem like anything's changed where we'd bring that up again. Mm -hmm. So the major focus on this became kind of twofold. What changes in direction is potentially needed within the freeway corridor? And are you looking at any kind of a lot size or density adjustment in your rural area? And so right now, the remainder of the focus, I think, would be taking information that we got from our workshop on the freeway corridor and presenting some concepts to the Planning Commission and the Council on that. We're uh, assembling a draft document, but that will be a major component. What kind of land use changes and decisions should be made within the freeway corridor? We'd want to have an informal meeting with the Planning Commission, invite the Council to that based on that direction, let's say that's a month from now or six weeks from now, uh, we'd finish a document and have a public hearing. Let me ask you this. There, is there any spots in Columbus? Uh, I know there's been a whole lot of requests for more light industrial areas. Is there any residential areas, maybe along Pine Street or anywhere else throughout the city, that could potentially be uh, upgraded to uh, light industrial? You know, our original search areas were based upon uh, transportation network uh, and support. Um, rarely does it work well in communities to take private roads, or not private, local roads, yeah. especially dual uh, jurisdictional roads like Pine and try to turn it into a major development without direction from the other community. and. Uh, so we did not pursue that on any of the other avenues. How about Broadway? We, yeah, originally, south. we talked and looked at Broadway. and Out uh, by the, the Wolf Farm there or whatever. It's on the south side, there's some commercial-style people there anyways now. I mean, uh, We did not carry that out. In part, you have a large, vacant land inventory in both the freeway corridor and along Lake Drive, and we simply said, you can reevaluate that at the next time rather than trying to perhaps change your focus of yeah. development in the two primary areas you currently have. Okay. We let it go at that. I think the last time, the other area that we talked about is whether or not we were going to connect the two commercial areas. In other words, whether we were, because you have. You Up have, through 23. Right. You have 23 that's commercial, then you have 23 that's residential, then you have 23 that's commercial and whether or not that corridor was going to be all commercial at some point. A lot of houses in there. And I think that's what, that was the consensus that there were. There's, there's houses, there's quite there's, a few of you know, those people that would like to see the zoning go that way, but. Oh, there are. Yeah. And oh. there's, a, there's a big chunk in there that's been given to the state of Minnesota too. Yeah, you got some land trust areas that. <clears throat> well, you got the block. stanky piece, but I'm talking even from from Camp 3 down, I mean, there's there's a lot of houses. 26. Uh, well, why wouldn't you consider doing Kettle River Boulevard and Broadway more so than anywhere else in Columbus? That, that would make sense to me. I mean, the, great, the, great, but, the greater Columbus, I remember that same argument about putting a quick trip or something in on Potomac and Broadway, and that didn't go over good at all. No, no boy, they were, they were, she, that was pretty pretty rough. Yeah, so. That was but, the same thing at Kettle River, too. They wanted convenience zoning, and it, would, it didn't go over very well. But, and a lot of the argument back then, too, is we can't even move the land we have, so why are we looking at making more commercial property? So, right. Which is a somewhat but, valid argument, I guess. Yeah. Well, once again, I think you got some landowners there that would like to see that go, but then the neighbors around are saying they don't want to see it. So they, that's everything. They didn't move out here to be next to a exactly. convenience store with a bunch of riffraff going in and out. Light fixtures. You could right. pull them in there, dude. Yeah. Okay, so. Thank you. Thanks for all your input, but you didn't bring up going to 10 acres, how come? Didn't I put that in here? You could go the other way. You, you, you could be Just kidding. totally consistent with Met Council and uh, force everyone to develop I, at 10 acres. I, I, I suspect we'd get some people out of the woodwork on that one. Yeah, you would. <laughs> All right. Stick with the rural residential, and we're just not, uh, not conforming. 
deal. We're, we're, we're going to write up that we're at five acres. We don't have to play games averaging wetlands. We're just five acres. Yeah. And sorry, That's what we're going to say. So we don't have a designation. We're going to, pro, we're going to mention that we've adapted uh, planned unit development procedures that allow a lot of averaging. It doesn't change that density. Um, so That's our cul-de-sac rule? Pardon? Are you going to put in there that we have the cul-de-sac? We can have two and a half acre lots with so many feet on a cul-de-sac. You know that detail doesn't go into the comp plan. Oh, it doesn't. That that's strictly zoning. But we we will mention we're using mm -hmm. we're not going to increase the density, but we're using other tools to develop the land more efficiently. Smartly. Okay. No more pencil lots. Okay. Thank you. All right. I think at this time we've covered everything and. Per Minnesota statute 13D.05, we have to conduct a closed meeting. So at this time, we have to wave everybody goodbye. I would just like to say uh, one thing before okay. we leave. Uh, sure. The vote I had with uh, Jeff St. Martin, I didn't vote against Jeff St. Martin. I voted against adding additional staff. I thought uh, okay. we have enough staff here. We don't need to add additional. That's what I voted against. Point, point taken. Okay, thank you.